Is he worthy of praise? It says, praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. Is he worthy of praise? If you really believe that it's worthy, will you stand to your feet and give God a shout of praise? Only stand to your feet if you really believe that he's worthy. Only give him praise if you really believe that he's worthy. Only shout hallelujah if you think he's worthy. Only clap your hands and stop your feet if you think God is worthy of an awesome praise. Give God some praise. Give him some praise like he's worthy. Give him some praise. Give him some praise like he's an awesome God. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. It is truly good to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. Amen. I don't know about you. But when I woke up this morning, I thank God, amen. When I was enclosed in my right mind, I thank God, amen. Because I had the activity and the movements of my limbs, I thank God, amen. First and foremost, giving honor and glory to my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. If it was not for him, I would not be standing here, amen. And also for the awesome man of this house, the awesome angel of this house, Reverend Frank T. White Sr., amen. What an honor and a privilege I count it that I am able to serve under him, amen, as he follows Jesus Christ, amen. And thank all of y'all for being here, because y'all sure enough could have walked out during fellowship time, amen. But thank you for being here, amen. And all those people that I talked to and I said, y'all pray for me. I'm holding y'all to that. Please pray for a brother, amen. Amen. But if the Lord says the same, I will not be up here this long, amen. Amen. If we'll um, turn to Psalms, the eighth chapter. Psalms, the eighth chapter. When you have a say amen. It reads thusly, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who hath set thy glory is above the heavens, out of the mouths of babes and suckling hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast, thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things under his feet all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. It probably should be rather better, read better like this. O Lord, our Lord, with some excitement, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. I like that ninth verse there, but I also like it in the third verse where it says, when I consider thy heavens and the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. If I was to give us a subject for this morning, it would be something to consider. Something to consider. Let us pray. God, I thank you. For this time, this moment, 
that we have come before you to give your name praise. God, I stand here in need of your anointing. God, I stand here, Lord God, as an empty vessel for you to pour into. God, these are your hands. This tongue is your tongue. My mind is your mind. Speak these to your people. God, they're here. They are here to hear a word from you. And God, as my pastor has said, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else but a word from you. So, God, I pray, Lord God, that you would just take control of this message, Lord God. You know the time that a study that has been put in, Father God. But, Lord God, all of that would come to nothing if you're not in it. So, God, please let your presence rest upon me. In Jesus' name, amen. Something to consider. To quote the wise King Solomon from the third chapter of the book of Ecclesia, to something, to everything, there is a season, a time to every purpose under heaven. To everything, there is a season, a time to every purpose under heaven. For many, as this year comes to an end, the day between the days between Christmas and New Year's is a time and a season for reflection. Reflection, reflection. Considering the days and the weeks and the months that have passed this past year have gone by. We look back and look at the 365 days almost, amen, and all that it entails, amen. And for each of us in this sanctuary this morning, we have some milestones, and we've had some memories made, amen. We've had some ups, and we had a few downs, amen. Thank God we had more ups and downs, amen, amen. There have been some advancements, and there have been some changes. We all have something to reflect on. We all have something to think about. We all have something that we can look back and see the goodness of Jesus in all of our lives, amen. Can I get a witness in here, oh man? Amen. Thank God that we are here today, that he has done some mighty things in each and every one of our lives. Amen. But not only is this a season to reflect on the past, but it's to consider the new year and what the future holds. To make those resolutions, amen, plans for the days ahead, amen, whether it is to exercise more and lose weight, amen, or just to do better at something, to be better at something. For me, I'm going to try my best not to procrastinate. God bless me. To do better at something. We all can relate to the thing about reflection. We all have stuff in our life that we can look back over and ponder in our minds and think about over this season. As we return to this book of Psalms, the scripture that has been lifted for us on this morning, the book of Psalms is considered to be one of the most popular books read throughout the world today. It's considered to be one of the most popular books in the Bible today. The book of Psalms is a book of hymns and poems that are composed together by many different writers, and it's divided into five different divisions, amen? And it is in this book that we find some of the most iconic and widely known scriptures in the world today, amen? Just to name a few, we all know Psalms 23, amen? The Lord is my shepherd, amen? I think that's something that we all were taught from a little person. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, amen? One of my favorites is Psalms 34 and 1. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. The Holy Spirit has brought that back to my mind so many times when I'm at work and I'm somewhere and I'm complaining. He always says, the, 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 I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. How his praise can be in my mouth if I'm complaining, amen? But also we hear um, Psalms 100, amen? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, Amen. And it talks about when you enter into the course with thanksgiving and you're talking about coming into his house with a praise. That's Psalms 100, amen. And I know we all know this one, Psalms 150, verse 6, it says, And let everything that have breath 
praise ye the Lord. Amen. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. And one of those iconic psalms we have selected for this morning is Psalms 8. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. When I consider the heavens, and they ask the question, what is man that thou art mindful of him? That thou, the son of man, that thou visiteth him. I can see David when he wrote this psalm that he was out in the fields looking at sheep. Maybe one night and he just happened to look up and the Lord poured into his spirit this psalm as he sat down to write it. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Now you may be considering, Rod, why have you stood before these your people and brought up this thing? When I read it, it talked about when I consider. And during this time that we are taken to look back and reflect over the goodness of God and reflect over the things past and the mistakes that we may have made or the mishaps that we may have, have done, I wanted to tell you one more thing that you should consider. One more thing to spend time on. One more thing to take to heart. One more thing to reflect on. And that is that God has been good. And he is worthy of praise. That God has been good and he is worthy of praise. I just wanted to give us one thing, something to consider. That God has been good and he is worthy of praise. I just want to take a moment to glean the following observations. First and foremost, the first thing to consider is consider God's power in his creation. God's power in his creation, verse, verses 2 and 3, where it says, Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength. Because of thine enemies, thou hast mighted, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the heavens and the work of thy fingers, the moon and the star thou that which thou hast ordained. David gives us two wonderful examples of God's power in his creation. The first one comes from verse number two where it talks about out of the mouths of babes and suckling, thou hast ordained strength. Think about it. That God could use the weak, those things that are considered to be weak, to steal the enemy. Steal, that word steal means to cease, to decease, to put it into the avenger. That he can establish strength in that which may seem to be weak. That which may seem to be futile. That may, that what must that, that thing that may seem to be useless, God can use it to steal the enemy. I like it the way where it says in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verse 27, it says, But God hath chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the mighty things. Amen. No matter how wise you think you are, God can take the smallest thing and make you feel dumb. Amen. No matter how strong you think you may be, God can take the smallest thing and bring you down to earth. Amen? Now, that's true power right there. Amen? That you can take the smallest thing and crush it down to earth. There's a wonderful in the illustration of this in, in the um, chapter of Matthew, the 21st chapter. In the book of Matthew, the 20, 21st chapter. A wonderful illustration of this. And it's where the triumphal entry, where Jesus Christ is walking and he's coming into Jerusalem. And, and, you know, all the people are laying down palm trees and they're saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna. And they're crying out and stuff. And, and the, the, the um, Pharisees and scribes, they were upset, but they knew they couldn't stop the people right then and there. And, they, and then Jesus goes into the temple. And he goes in there and turns over the, the, the money changers' tables and things and and there's a part in there that we seldom look at, but um, at verse 16, a little before verse 16, it talks about how the children in the temple were crying out, Hosanna. Hosanna. That the children in the temple were crying out, Hosanna. And that the scribes and the, and the Pharisees came and Jesus said, do you see what they're doing? And God says in the 16th verse, out of the, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, 
will God perfect his praise. That out of the mouth of babes and suckling, those, th- those individuals who sometimes we think can't even talk straight, they can't connect their verbs and nouns together, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, God will perfect his praise. That even the feeblest of, the huma- of humanity functions as a firm testimony of God's glory. That even the feeble ones of humanity functions as a testament of God's glory. In the hands of the Lord, even the weak is mighty, amen? Great results from small causes when the Lord is at work, amen? When God calls the work to be done, he only needs the littlest thing to make it mighty, amen? Now, there is, a, there is something that brought to my mind when I thought about this. I don't know if y'all know the character of, of Hulk, the, the Incredible Hulk, amen? I'm a, comic, I'm a comic book person, so y'all got to bear with me, amen? Amen. The Incredible Hulk. And I think about the Incredible Hulk in this sense that, you know, the Incredible Hulk is really um, Bruce Banner. Somebody that's weak. Somebody that's, that, that could get beat up easily. Somebody that you would not be afraid of. The weakest thing. But when he gets angry, he turns into the Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk has to destroy anything. And it was all because of some gamma rays that, that transformed this seamlessly small, weak individual into the incredible hook. And I relate this in this sense that, that when God's glory falls upon something, it's not about the gamma rays, but it's about the glory of God. When God touches something, it can become even mightier than the incredible hook when it's in the Lord's hands. Amen. Amen. Now, there should be some hope in the house on today when you think about that. That even in your weakness, God can make you strong. Amen. That even when you're going through, that God can make you strong. Even when you seem like that you have no power, no hope, that God can give you strength and bring you through. That even when we're weak, we are made strong because of God's power. His anointing, his glory falls upon us. Amen. But secondly, he also talks about in that, in that first verse, he also talks about that the second way that in God's creation that God shows us is that it says in verse number three, when you consider the heavens and the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou ordained, which thou ordained, just to give you some facts that helped that blew my mind when I started looking at this, the speed of light, I don't mean y'all know what the speed of light is, it's hundred and 86,000 miles per second. It travels 186,000 miles per second. To give us some context, that means it can go around the earth 7.5 times in one second. Light can travel around the earth 7.5 times in one second. Just to let y'all know that if we were to, if light was to travel out for a year, it would travel 5.8 trillion miles in a year 5.8 trillion miles in a year now that might not mean anything to you but when you think about the Milky Way the Milky Way is the system that we live in if y'all don't know amen the Milky Way to travel from one end of the Milky Way to the other would take a thousand a hundred thousand light years to travel from one end of the Milky Way to the other would take a hundred thousand light years and this is the Milky Way is considered a small galaxy there are thousands of galaxies and that blew my mind because when I consider the heavens that God has made all these wonderful things and it is he that keeps them together amen I have trouble keeping all the events in my life going on and all the things that I have going but God keeps not only this universe for all the universes together. It is he that have done this. It is he alone that continues to do this. I like what it says in Nehemiah, the sixth chapter, I mean the ninth chapter, verse six, it says, Thou, even thou, art Lord alone. Thou hast made the heavens, the heavens of heavens, and all their hosts, and the earth, and all the things that are therein, the seas, and all the things therein, and, and thou hast preserved them all. 
and the host of heaven worship thee. He keeps all of this in order. Could you imagine having to take care of your children, your neighbor's children, the neighbors down the street children, the people in Africa's children, keep the sun rising and lowering, keep the stars where they're supposed to be, and make sure that none of the, 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 the planets get out of orbit because if they move one inch either way, they'll be thrown into oblivion. Could you imagine having to keep control of all these things and God does it with ease? Because I like it where it says, the work of thy fingers. Think about that, the work of thy fingers. It didn't say the work of thy hands. It didn't say the work of thy arms, but it says the work of thy fingers. That this is nothing but finger work to him. This is nothing but to lead to him. It kind of reminds me of when someone is crocheting, that you have a, a massive person that is doing crochet, and that they're working and building these massive, tasks, these massive rugs and things just by the work of their fingers. That when they finish, you see an excellent rug, all by the work of their fingers. And I can see it now that David outside, looking up into the sky, and, and I have an app on my phone. It's called um, Sky Guide. I don't know if any of y'all got Sky Guide. And it just shows all of the stars that are in the, sky, in the sky. And no matter where I turn, it tells me about each and every one of those stars in the sky. And when I look at that thing, I am blown away by the number of stars in the sky. God has done it all. God keeps it all under control. He is in control of all these things, and nothing passes through his hands without him knowing. God is all powerful and all knowing. But I also like it where it says in Job, the, the ninth chapter. Verses, um, verse 8, it says, Who alone spreadeth out the heavens? Who alone treadeth upon the sea? Who does great things that pass finding out? Yea, wonders without numbers. God has done some mighty things, has he not? Amen. God has done some mighty things, has he not? Amen. And he shows us this consideration in his creation. But not only do we see the consideration in his creation, secondly, we see the consideration in his provision and his care. Please consider his provision and his care. It comes from verse 4 through 8. It says, it says, it talks about that, what is man that thou art mindful of him? The son of man that thou visiteth him. This question is a question that provokes both a sense of perspective when you look at how insignificant we are as humans, especially when you think about the universe as a whole. It says in the Psalms that we, but man is but a vanity, that he is but a shadow that passeth, that in the scheme of things that we are insignificant. We talk about the grain of the, of the sands of the beaches. That's how we are in this universe, a grain in the sands of all the beaches. But it also provokes a sense of awe and astonishment when you think about that even though insignificantly as we are, God is mindful of you. God is mindful of you. What is man? that thou art mindful of him. God is always thinking about us. You are always on his mind. And even better, not only are you always on his mind, but the thoughts that he has towards you are thoughts of good and not of evil. Thank God, because I know I did some messed up things, amen? That the thoughts that, I had, that he has told me are thoughts of good and not of evil. That Think about this, that not only are you on his mind, but it says that thou art the son of, that we are the son of man, that thou shalt visit him. God left his throne of glory to come see about you. That God left his throne of glory, all the glories of heaven, to come save a wretch like me. Amen. I don't know about you. I can all talk about myself. That God left his throne in glory 
to save a wretch like me. I just wanted to see how much God loved me. So I looked up on the internet to see that there are 7.7 billion people in the world today when they last checked in December of this month, of 2018. 7.7 billion people. And God is concerned about me. Oh, y'all don't understand that. There are 7.7 billion people and that when I cry out unto the Lord, he is concerned about me. Who am I? That God is mindful of me. Who am I? That he was visiting me. 7.7 billion people upon this earth. And God is mindful of me. Thank God for all the things that he's done for me. Thank God that that all the ways that he's made. It says, forget not his benefits. God has poured out even so much upon each and every one of us. It says, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. He has made you a little lower than the angels. He has given you honor and glory. And I like where it says that thou hast made. When I thought about that, that thou hast made, it just shows me that you are not a mistake. You weren't an accident that God has made you. Where it says you are fearfully and wonderfully led. It was the work of his hands that put you together. That put you together. Thou hast made me to be who I am. And he's continuing to work things out. For my good. He's continuing to work things out in all of our lives. He has put honor and glory, something that I couldn't do for myself, upon each and every one of us. Thou hast given him dominion over the works of thy hands. He has put all things under your feet. You are dominion over the sheep and the oxen, over the beasts of the fields, the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, all the stuff that's swimming. Although it may be more powerful, you God has put it under your feet. Now I ask you a question. Think about who you are. And then think about all that God has done for you. Now I, I'm not trying to tell you to, to, to be to hype yourself up, but really think about who you are and the blessing that God has bestowed upon you. I can only talk for myself. I realize that I'm a wretch undone, that I'm far from where I should be. But thank God that I'm not where I used to be. God has blessed me so much despite who I am. When you consider man, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man, that thou would visit him. But not only are you to consider the power of his creation, and not only are you consider the provision and his care that he gives to each and every one of us, but finally, in verse number nine, 1 and 9, it says, consider his person and his character. It says, it starts out in this Psalms, Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Take a moment to think about that. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Not just in Raleigh, not just in North Carolina, not just in the United States, but how, oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. And if truth be told, if every one of all the collective souls on the whole wide world were to stand and give God praise, it still would not be enough. Can I get a witness? Amen. It says that thou, thou hast set thy glory above the, above the heavens. Heaven could not even contain the glory of God. If every heart, if every voice, if every mouth was to open up their mouths and say, glory be unto God. It still wouldn't be enough, amen. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. And now when we talk about the name in the Bible, it normally talks about somebody's character. 
somebody who they are in person. And if you know anything about, about the names of God, each time God did something for somebody's in, in somebody's life, they gave them a name. They gave them a man. And maybe God doesn't mean, the name God doesn't mean much to you, amen? Maybe you don't really connect with that, with that name for God, amen? But maybe some of y'all can connect with him as Jehovah Jireh. That he is the God that supplies, amen? That when you were on your last dime, that God supplied the very need that you have. Maybe you know him as Jehovah Jireh, that when your back was up against the wall and you didn't have nowhere to turn that, God supplied your needs. Do I have a witness in the house on today? Or maybe you know him as Jehovah Shalom, the God, the Lord God, your peace, that when all hell was breaking loose in your life and you didn't have any way that you could torn, turn and you was in the midst of the storm, that he was your peace, amen. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is my peace, amen. Or maybe you needed him to be your banner, amen. That you needed him to be your victory, amen. That he was Jehovah Nisi, amen. That when you couldn't fight the battle and you needed a champion, amen, that God stepped in and showed out and showed up, amen. Oh, some of y'all may remember that he is Jehovah Rapha, amen. The Lord, my healer, amen. That when you were on your sickbed, amen. When the doctors didn't know what to do, you could call on the name of Jehovah Rapha, amen. That he is your healer, amen. He is your healer, amen. That he is Jehovah Sick Canoe, amen. When I couldn't be righteousness for myself, amen, he became righteousness, amen. That when I couldn't die for my own sins, amen, Jesus Christ died for my sins, amen. That he is the Lord that sees, amen. Wherever you are, in the dark place or in the light place, God knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly what you have need of. But this is the name I like the best. Jesus. Now, I know all those compound words and stuff. Jehovah, uh, Shalom, Jehovah, um, Sikhanu, Jehovah, right? But I like Jesus. Because in that word Jesus, it says, the Lord who saves. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I was in need of some saving. Amen. I was on my way to hell. But Jesus stepped in. He turned my situation around and placed my feet on solid ground. Some things to consider. Jesus. When you don't know who to turn, you can call on the name. Jesus. When you don't know what to do, you can call on the name. Jesus. When you don't know which way is up or down, you can call on the name. Jesus. Do I have some people who've called on the name Jesus? Do I have somebody who realized that Jesus is worthy of praise? Now, I don't know what you're thinking about. I don't know what you're reflecting on. But today, I am telling you, we need to reflect on the God, Jesus Christ, and all that he's done for me. There's a saying that says, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. Oh, I don't hear enough hallelujahs when I think about the goodness of Jesus. Maybe we're not taking enough time to think. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that his has done for me my soul my soul my soul my mind my heart my hands my feet my tongue says hallelujah oh lord our lord 
How excellent is thy name in all the earth. God bless you. If you stand to your feet. Oh, y'all can praise him right now. I dare somebody in the house to really think about the name of Jesus. I dare somebody in the house to think about all the excellent things he has done. Not in the earth, but think about all the excellent things he's done in your life. All the ways that he's made in your life. I dare you to think about him. And still keep your seat and can't say, hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Our Lord, how excellent is thy name.